Hello everybody. We are trying to get the live video set up here. You think that one of these times I'm going to be perfect at it, but I'm not perfect yet. Okay. So we are just going to move this link to, how do I do it? There it is. I like to have the link on my computer because then I can see if somebody talks. I don't always see it on my phone, which is doing the recording. And I will quickly put this link in my Facebook group because sometimes people will find it there. And it's just going to take me a second. I know if you were waiting, there's a few people who are already here. Welcome, welcome. I'm excited to have you all. Uh, my husband took the kids and he was like, I'm going to leave the house at 9, maybe 9, 10. And I was like, yeah, right. I will tell everybody that I'm going to go live at 10. And guess what? It's 1030. <laughs> so I was, um, I should have given him an hour of uh, lateness, whatever. Anywho, it doesn't matter. It's fine. So welcome. I could show you my face, but it's very hard to like adjust everything. Let me see if I can do it. Ready? That's me. <laughs> so I am live. I am a human. I am not a robot doing this. That is the point of my face. So you can watch this again a million times, obviously, so it doesn't have to just be live today. I also was a little late because I was trying to turn on like super chat, whatever the heck that is. So I'm new to having monetization available on my YouTube channel and it sounds like a good idea, but I really don't know how to uh, utilize it. So I'll learn. I'll learn one of these days, but today is not that day. I did ask in my YouTube group if there was some suggestions on what we wanted to make today. And I have lots of things that I want to show on video, but I thought if someone is like here and wants to watch, we should do what they want to see, right? And it was suggested. I mean, there were a few suggestions, but the one I'm going to go with was to create a mosaic, overlay mosaic pouch, which means you're basically making a tube and you won't have to cut your yarn all the time. And if you don't have to cut your yarn all the time, then you don't have to deal with ends. And that definitely sounds good to me. So I grabbed some yarn from my scrap. The red and the black contrast well, but they're both dark. The white contrasts better. Well, I think it'll work. And basically with a tube, um, if you've watched my videos on crocheting from the center out with Overlay Mosaic, you know that when you get to the end, you just... Um, you lock it in so you don't have to cut it and you don't need stitch markers. So we're basically doing the same thing here. Ooh, we have someone watching. Zara Tabasum says hello. Hello, welcome. I'm excited to have everybody here. It says there are eight people watching. So I don't know if you've seen on Instagram, there's like a, a clip that goes, oh, my videos are watched by well over four people worldwide. I can basically say that right now because I've got well over four. <laughs> um, I'm going to use my Summer Direction Cal, the giant arrow section, because um, I already have videos on it and I thought it might be fun to show how to turn it into a tube. And um, because it looks summery to me and it just starts to feel like summer outside. I'm going to use the dark one, well, multicolored one. This is what it looks like for me. I have no idea what it's called. Um, I'm not cool enough to know brand names when I get scrap yarn from people. So that didn't have a label. I don't know what it is. It's definitely acrylic. It's probably worsted weight. And the red is also acrylic and worsted weight. So I have... Oh, I was going to use a 5mm hook. It's the wrong one. Hmm, where's my other hook? Okay, today we're using a 4.5mm hook. It doesn't really matter. It matters if you're wearing something, you want the gauge, right? We are going to start with a foundation row. And there are a few ways to do my foundation for mosaic crochet. You need to know how wide your piece is going to be. And you can chain the width of your piece, if you like. Mm, I could count my squares here. Let me just see on my pattern here. Um, two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I think that one's 18 plus a balancing stitch. So we can do chaining and then you, you skip the turning chain and you go back to do single crochets. 
Carol Reddy says hi from India. Hello. I don't know how to speak any of the languages that are not English and Spanish. I guess I know a little French. If uh, if you were from somewhere that spoke Spanish or French, I would give you a proper greeting. I don't even know what you speak in India. Probably English, obviously, because you speak English. But um, definitely one of my passions, other than crochet, is languages and countries. How much yarn will you need? Zara is asking, I want to make with you, how much yarn will you need? Well, this is how much yarn I grabbed. It's going to be too much. These, that's quite a bit here. It depends on how big you want to make your pouch. My pouch is going to be very small because I'm going to do one repeat of it on each side. I'm anticipating it to be about this big and then however high you want it. So it's very variable. Um, I would just use scrap yarn for this so that you can learn the technique and then grab your proper yarn once you understand what's happening. That's what I would suggest. And, ooh, learning some more things. Carol says English and three other Indian languages. That is so cool to me. Uh, here in Canada, obviously, we speak English. And the other national official language is French. So we had to take French in school, but I don't really remember much of it. I can say, like, j'aime la banane, which means I like bananas. That's what I remember from grade school. <laughs> but we have so many cultures that um, it's not hard to find someone who speaks not English. So it's always been something I like, but never got around to learning enough. Today, obviously, we're going to do it English. My subtitles, I don't know if I turned on the auto caption. Maybe I missed that button. Let me see. It only allows me to do auto captions in English. And then I can add later. What's that mean? Nope. I can add later uh, subtitles. So I've been doing that to my other pattern videos. This is a really boring video to watch me just holding this. Sorry, guys. Uh, I talk too much. That's the problem. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, I add the languages in the subtitles afterwards, but it doesn't do it live. Oh, see? I can't even read that. Somebody has written, it looks like Russian to me. Um, but I don't actually read Russian. Hello and welcome. I hope you can also understand English a little because otherwise you won't be able to see. Um, but I think it's so cool that the internet allows us to have all these tools where we can do an English video, create all these subtitles, and more people can understand it. That That's cool to me. Today, for the Mosaic Crochet Foundation, you saw I did a chain, and you could do a turning chain and single crochet back. I prefer to do a foundation single crochet, which means... I only chain two and then I go into that first one and I pull up a loop and this loop is going to be the chain at the bottom and then you go in that creates the single crochet so we're actually doing it this direction this would be the chains at the bottom and that allows me to add as many as I need to without worrying about my count I just crochet a bunch and then I can pull things apart if it's too big so that would be two three oops and I brought this box on my last video I put this box up and I think it helped there's no zoom function on the live so my camera is too far away and I can't make the tripod go any lower so I brought the box up and I stand for the videos instead of sitting at my desk so this is possibly a new technique for you I think there are probably videos out there just teaching <laughs> this I call it a chainless foundation. I think it's technically called a foundation single crochet. And this is the chains at the bottom and these are the single crochets at the top. Tension is hard to get compared to just chaining because it's new and it helps if you are not talking all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hello to everyone from Kazakhstan. Ooh, that's very far from me. And uh, welcome. I bet it wasn't Russian then, was it? I don't know if you is Kazakhstan Russian? Would you have your own language? I'm not sure. So I'm Canadian. We've got someone from India, someone from Kazakhstan. And what else? One, two, three. Zara, Carol, and I don't know how to read that. So Kazakhstan, India, and somebody. 
and Canada. And it says we've got a couple other people watching. Hi, Debasmita. Oh dear, I shouldn't try to pronounce everyone's names. It's going to be horrible. Ooh, another India. Okay, well that's fun. It must be the right time, right? Here it's 10.42 in the morning. So I don't think there's a lot of people on a Saturday morning that get up too early around here. But 10.42 doesn't seem that early to me. My kid's waking up at 7. Why don't you try floral patterns? Yes, floral is fun. Floral is, um, in my opinion, needs a larger chart because I like it to be swirly and I, I don't have angled stitches in my patterns yet. I was trying to keep it simple for people. And so floral to me just looks too chunky when we do up regular stitches. I want to, ha I want to have some slanted stitches, you know? Oh, 10 p.m. You guys are up so late. 10 p.m., 10 p.m., 10 p.m. Oh, man. So it's almost Sunday for you guys. I have the whole day ahead of me. You just finished your day. Oops, I missed the... I'm going only under the, the V here. So with this pouch idea... I've never made a pouch. <laughs> this is live experiments with Ashley. Um... With the pouch, I think you could just make a tube, like so, and you could go round and round, and then afterwards you could sew the bottom together. But I, I'm pretty sure you can also create this as like the foundation at the bottom. So what would you prefer to see? I, I've never done either, but I've done projects and I've done both techniques for making pouches and bags. We'll just have to add the mosaic technique to it. Shawl patterns. Oh my, are you trying to advertise for me? I just created a shawl bundle. I have six shawl patterns currently. They're on Ravelry and Etsy. And right now they're on sale. On Etsy and Ravelry, if you buy a shawl pattern, it gets 25% off automatically. There's no code. But if you wanted to buy all six patterns on Ravelry, it only works on Ravelry, you can get all six patterns in a bundle. And you get 50% off when you use the code 2022SHAWLS. So I do have um, a website where those links are all, all over the place. And I think I put the link uh, in my link tree, which should be in the description. It says link tree slash LFM and mosaic. It should be the first link to get to my website. So the shawls that I have right now are all rectangles. Some people think shawl must mean it's a triangle shawl, but... It doesn't have to be a triangle shawl, and mine aren't, because I was trying to keep things simple, slash, I've only been doing this for two years, and I can only make so many things, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, yeah, there is a couple shawls there, and I would like to introduce uh, some triangle shawls at some point, because I do think it's fun. Or tapestry bags. Tapestry is not the technique that I typically use, however... Um, yeah, it's like a wrap. You're right. A rectangle. It's like a wrap, a shawl. I really thought of it as a half blanket when I was designing them. In my mind, it's a half blanket that you put on your shoulders. <laughs> um, tapestry is usually when you're carrying the yarn. So you'd have a couple colors here and you, you keep the color on here and you just crochet over it until it's time to use it. And then you would crochet over the other one. Whereas my patterns with interlocking crochet and mosaic crochet, you're only ever using one color and then you like leave the loop and use the other color. Why does my phone still have that thing up? I don't want that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hello, Ashley Bratzel Designs. Hello to everyone in chat. Welcome, Joanne. We are happy to have you here. I haven't done much crochet done yet. I talk too much, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I wasn't counting either, but I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. So how many did I say my chart was? Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18 and 18 would be 36. So I guess we'll keep going. I'm going to do, nobody answered earlier when I was saying, should we do a foundation row or just make a tube and sew it later? So I'm going to do the tube. This is 33, I think I said, and 34, and 
five. I could probably have a live video where I just talked and you would see my face and I would just talk for five million years. And maybe it would be boring and maybe it'd be interesting. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I didn't change color. That's this yarn. It's variegated yarn. It just dyed that way. And I don't have a use for it because I just think it's weird colors and it's hard to find a color that contrasts well with black and well with white because you need to always have good contrast between the yarns. So I found red and I hope it's going to work. You're going to make the tube with me. That will be great. You can always watch this video again, but I think that once you figure out the technique, uh, it won't be too hard. So this is how big our tube is. That doesn't seem like enough. Let me double check this. 18 and 18 is 36. You're new to my channel. Well, welcome. I have 70 videos or something, but honestly, the beginning one, they are sucky. <laughs> they still teach and they still help, but they're not that great. Well, it says it's going to be enough. So I thought my pager project was going to be this big. Could make it two repeats wide. I don't think a pouch this big. I don't think even my little kids are going to want a pouch that big. Let me keep going. I have three little kids. Alice is seven. Remington is five. We call him Remy. Um, and Melody is two. So they always steal my crochet stuff. Constantly little squares turn into baby blankets. Anytime I make any sort of bag at all, it's taken, filled with toys pretty quickly. <laughs> they're, they're supportive, but they also like to tease me, always saying things like, Mom, no more yarn. Did you buy yarn again? Oh, Mom. You know, it's fun. Melody, of course, doesn't do much teasing. She just does what the other ones do, copycats. Two is great age for copying, which the others are very patient with. Alice and Remington are amazing, and I mean Melody is too, but she's two. There's not much that you can learn from a two-year-old yet. She's, her personality is going to be just as kind and compassionate as Alice and Remy, I'm sure. A 14-year-old and a 10-year-old, yes, they're going to take your stuff. That's exactly what it is. But you know, it's, it's out of love. That's them saying, I appreciate that you made something and I compliment you the item by taking it. <laughs> You're like, okay, guess I don't need that one. Let's see how many I got now. Um, I could put a stitch marker in because I am distracting myself. I have a few things here. Okay, let's count. So this is where we did two chains. So that first little hole you can use as a stitch or not. Some people prefer not to, but I think that it looks too bulky if you don't. So this is, maybe you can see it. Um, I'll turn it this direction. So where we're at the top, those stitches that are close to the hook, those are the V's that will make the top of the single crochet. And then this at the bottom will be the chain. And it actually makes a nice V as well when you do this technique. And you don't have, sometimes with chains, it stretches out a lot. So that's why I really like this one. And if we count the stitches at the top, these little, the V counts as one, or you can look at the hole kind of here. That's where I'd be entering. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six. Um, well I guess we count it backwards. Uh one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to count ten from this side instead and put my stitch marker there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my chart has eighteen for the width. And um, if you have the pattern Summer Direction Cow and you look at the chart, it actually has straight border lines on the edges. So I'm really just doing the intersection. Those straight border lines are for the interlocking technique to lock everything together. And I didn't adjust this pattern. It's one of my older ones. So I'm skipping the border lines for this. Though this will actually be two repeats of the design. And I need to do at least one more repeat. I think one more. So we'll do three repeats wide and it'll be a tube. 
Oh, I need eight more. Da -da -da. and eight so uh, maybe I could show you the chart I don't know which one is easier to move my computer Beep. okay can you see my chart oh yeah you can see the shiny light so this is the lines that I was talking about blue white and blue and then this side blue white and blue oops don't do that I'm going to skip those and the inner part here is actually 19 because one of this first white mostly white row and this one here is exactly the same so it's for balancing when you're doing it across um, we are just going to do 18 so I'm going to skip the first three and skip the last four and I'm going to do in here 18 stitches so if you have that chart or if you can go off of that quick view Technically, it is a paid pattern, um, but I also have a free version of the written on my website. Uh, the chart is not included on my website. So if it was not my own pattern, you wouldn't be allowed to show that. But it's my own pattern, and I can choose to share it to you. Knowing that we're going to be doing it in the circle or in the round in a tube fashion, we don't need a joining stitch or an end stitch. We are just going to join these together. Make sure it's not twisted. So you can see that the top is always going to be the top. Oh, I think I did twist it. Let me double check. Um, this was stitch marker doesn't really need to be there anymore because that was just getting my count. So I brought it around making a tube. I'm going to join in here. I'm going to keep my yarn to the back of my project like this, if that helps. And I'm just going to make a slip stitch. Now the bottom is not joined, and at the end we'll have to sew the bottom together to make the bottom of the pouch. For now, I'm going to remove this because we don't need that, that was counting. There's one repeat and two repeats and three repeats of these little arrows. We're not going to cut it, we're going to grab our other yarn. In my written patterns, this would say main color, and this is contrasting color. And we're just going to pick up like so. We're going to pull it through the loop. And we're going to tighten this loop. It doesn't count as anything. It kind of disappears right there. And I'm going to bring it just to kind of keep it over that stitch there, just to hide him. He's going to be locked in. We're going to make one chain here. And we're also going to put it very tight so that things are locked together. So this yarn, he's not going anywhere. This tail and this tail you'll have to weave in at the end. And now we're on the next row. Looking at my pattern here, I'm going to start at round 26, or row, sorry. I guess we're doing it in rounds. It's written for a row. And across the whole bottom is just white. And that means we're not dropping any double crochets. So if you've done mosaic crochet before, you know that red, in, in order to drop down and cover this row with a drop double crochet, you would have to go into red. And there's no red down here. All of these are just going to be single crochets. And we are going to use this first stitch, the one that we joined in, because otherwise we will miss a stitch. We'll lose one, right? So we have to make sure we're counting. And you could chain one, but I think I'm just going to loosen it up a little and just go right into it and do a single crochet. I think that'll be sufficient. Um, this one, this little knot and everything, is going to have to get put to the inner when we join the round to make sure that it's hiding. But for now, it doesn't matter because we're just going to be working in this direction. And all of these are going... Oops. 
I did that wrong. Let me try again. We are always doing single crochets in the back loop. There's no joining stitch, which means this one potentially could have a drop down stitch, which means you need to use the back loop. And I'm going to count. Uh, 36 plus 18 is... Anybody want to do math with me? Crochet is too much math. <laughs> in grade 5, I actually got an A++ for math because I was really good at it. And some of that has gone away. So my calculator says 36 plus 18 is 54. Let's see if I made this right. Go away calculator, you are blocking my view. There we go. 54, thank you. We got the same number. Oops, sorry camera. You staying here? Okay. So um, we're going to start here. You, you can just go right in to the back loop. The front loop has to be available because we don't know on the next row if we'll have to do a dropped double crochet, right? So we're going to count. I'm going to actually focus on counting because the foundation row is kind of important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll put a stitch marker here actually because that's first our first repeating of the pattern. I don't know how you guys do stitch markers. I go around the whole loop like that. I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way, but that's the way I've been doing it. So then we could, instead of counting to 54, I guess we could count to 18 again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 16, 17, and 18. I Did you guys find some yarn? Are you crocheting with me? I'm, I feel like I'm going slow enough that you might be able to. Um, but I don't know how many people are going to watch the whole video because maybe you only need to know, oh, that's how the technique works, and then you're off and running, right? Some people can do that. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 16, 17, and 18. So here you want to make sure that you don't get things twisted because it's not locked in very well yet. You want to make sure that the, the main color stays down at the bottom at the main color. We want these tails to be hiding on the wrong side. Right now we're always looking at the right side. So we want everything to hide at the other side. And our first stitch here, we're going to join it into both loops with a slip. And then we're going to pick this gray one up again. So we haven't cut him. He's just hanging out at the back. You can tighten the red one. And I'm going to put it across. Oh, I'm, I'm out of the camera. Let me go. You were counting? Well, that's okay. Don't let me interrupt you. 
I'm just going to keep that red one tucked in to try and keep the inside tidy as well as the outside. So that kind of locks everything in. And then we'll start with, now we're going to be looking at row 27. Um, obviously it's not 27 here, but if you're following on the chart, that's what I'm looking at. And repeat the end of the round. Sure, of course, because that was a little confusing and I, I think I was off camera a little bit. So here was the final stitch that I made. And I want to make sure that nothing is twisted. Make sure, because right now you're locking everything in. We want to make sure that these tails are hiding at the back of the work because this will be the front that you can see. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we made. Make sure it is the first stitch and you're not losing a stitch. We can use stitch markers if we lose our count. You could count backwards if you aren't sure. But we're going to stretch everything out here and make sure this was our first one. This was the first hole. This red here is where I'm going to enter. I'm going to slip stitch under both loops with the red and that joins everything together. Then I'm going to pick up my other color and I'm going to slip stitch again. But the red one, I'm going to pull it quite tight. He kind of basically disappears. He doesn't actually count as a stitch. And then I'm going to cross it over because I want to lock it in with another slip stitch. And I tighten that up really tight. It doesn't really count as a stitch. It's just locking everything in. So your tails are kind of at the back. You're locked right into there. And the first stitch is going to go into that same spot. However, you're only picking up the back loop. That's going to be our first stitch. If we started with a double crochet, we would be picking up this loop down here. Looking at my row 27, it's all, um, it has X's on them. So, oh good, it was clear. Yay! There are X's on this chart. Um, so looking at row 27, you can see if you're looking at the inner, it starts with blue and there's two white squares, but they don't have X's. So this row again is all single crochets. That's really another um, foundation row. So we're going to count if we need to. If you wanted to put a stitch marker in here, that would help you when you're joining to know which stitch. Uh, I'm just going to go because I'm confident that that's my stitch. You're welcome, Cindy. And I don't really need to count this time because I have my stitch markers. I know that my foundation row was correct. So I'm just going to do single crochets all the way around. So this morning I was trying to learn how to do YouTube super chat. Have you ever heard of this? Maybe you watch more YouTube than I do because when I mentioned it to my husband, I was like, there's something on YouTube called super, uh, super. And he's like, super chat. I'm like, whoa, how do you know that? And he's like, I watch YouTube. Like, okay, fine. I obviously don't watch enough YouTube. I don't have time to watch YouTube. I'm too busy making patterns. So I turned on super chat and I don't really know what it does, but I'm trying to learn. And it's not really that important in my opinion. Um, it sure I make, I'm starting to make money on YouTube. With the advertising, it's been four days and I've made three dollars, woohoo, which is more than I had before, right? But um, I'm definitely not going to be uh, an internet sensation where I rely on my blog income or my YouTube income. I make my income from pattern sales. So if you're like, mm, I want to give Ashley some financial support, which would be cool, you can do the super chat thingy do we, but then YouTube is going to take 30% of the cut. If you don't want YouTube to take 30% of the cut and you want to support me financially, you could buy a pattern instead. Even if you don't plan on making the pattern, no one's going to know. So it could be a similar cost for you, but I would get more of the funds. And if you want to do super chat, that's fine too. I mean, I really don't care how people give me money. It's just exciting to get money. And if you don't want to give me any money at all, that's fine because that's kind of the purpose of YouTube, isn't it? I'm making a live tutorial and it's free. That's the whole point. I want to offer that for people, so don't feel obligated. You're going to check my patterns after live. That would be great. The link in the description 
goes to like a list of links has a list and I think today it starts with my sale and then it goes like here's my Ravelry store here's my Etsy follow me on Instagram go to my YouTube channel I think I'm on Pinterest and here's my website and I have a Facebook group and it's like a million different things right so yeah I find in my mind my website and my YouTube channel are forgiving um, Technically, I make ad revenue on my website as well, but it's very low. After two years, I managed to make $100. So I'm not obviously living off of $100 in a year. But that's kind of, that was the point of it. I didn't want it to be inundated with ads. And that's also what I think of as YouTube. It'd be nice to make a couple dollars from ads, but I definitely don't want it to be inundated with ads and then become unusable because the point is tutorials, right? So we're near the end and I wanted to show this again. You can count if you're unsure. You bought the wave shawl this morning. Yay! Well, yeah, you got to start this at first. Here was our stitch marker. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there, it looks like there's a lot going on here, but I wanted to point out that this is stitch 18, which means we're done. These are all joining loops. Now that we have reached 18, we're not going to go into here. It looks like there's lots of loops. Those are joining loops. We're going to go into here under both loops again to lock it all in. Just a slip stitch. And then we're picking up that red one because we're going to move on to the next row. And then we're pulling this one tight. It's kind of a process, right? Pull this one tight and cover the red one again because I want to lock it in. And then the red one here is also just pulled tight. So these are stitches that you don't work into. They're just joining it. We want them tight because we want them not to be noticeable when we have our finished pouch. And then the first stitch, I do want to loosen it just a little because otherwise I won't be able to get in there. We are now going to be working on row 28. Mostly it goes across as white, but we do have two X's. So I'm just going to double check my count here because it's not written on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight single crochets. And we're going to repeat it three times because this is three repeats. So we're using single crochet in the back loop only for eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we have an X. So the X tells us we're doing a dropped double crochet. This would be the stitch we'd normally be using. We're not going to use him. Our next stitch after this drop double crochet is going to be over here. So when we do a drop, we skip this. The drop double crochet, instead of being single crochet in the back loop, we're not going to use the black at all. We're going to go down here. Everything is lining up. We're going to pick that front loop. Yarn over, because it's a double crochet, and pick up the front loop. And that covers up the black stitch. So he doesn't get used. Our next single crochet goes in here. And then we have another dropped, so we kind of go down. You can see, you can double check your count because at the front, there's a missed loop here that we didn't use because we were using the single crochet. So you want to keep everything lined up straight. And then on the other side is all just single crochets again. So we're gonna continue on here. It's easier to use a visual cue when there's more than just single crochets, right? There's not much visual cue here yet. This one was placed in between my repeats. So this is the end of the repeating section. And now I need to count eight again before I get to those drops. One, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight. 
So this would be the stitch. We're going to drop it down, pick it up from the front. You could always, if you're feeling really unsure of what loop, you can count the missing loops at the front as well. And then we have a single and a dropped. And then make sure you're skipping that one at the back. We're going into the next one to finish off. This stitch marker was between, so it's seven stitches over on this side. And now we're going to do the beginning again. We're going to do it eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I dropped going here. There is also an option to lock in your double crochets. So these ones, you when there's only one stitch, it doesn't get flappy. Some people like to lock them in. So that would be right now. You could pick up that back loop. I've done the first half of my double crochet. The second half, before I yarn over, I'm going to grab the black loop. And then that locks it in so there's no flaps. In this pattern, because it was originally designed for interlocking crochet, those mesh dots are all over the place. I'm going to delete them for this. <laughs> so we are, we might want to lock things in later. At the beginning here, I don't think locking it in is very helpful because there's not much flap to begin with, but it can help you counting because you know that you've used that stitch. I don't really bother. It takes more time. Now this is seven stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's helpful to count because those joining places, sometimes people might go, oh, am I supposed to do another stitch there? You're not. To do our join, I don't know, maybe there's better ways of doing it. So this is my, this is what I'm doing. I'm just going under both loops and slip stitching it. Pick up the gray one, tighten the red one, um, I don't know, I think I had them on the wrong side now. I'm not sure it really matters, the back is not too messy yet, I'm not really sure. If I put the red one over, he'll be on this side. I like to lock them in, but I don't know if it matters, so I'm going to lock it in. He's at the back. He's just locked in. The next stitch here, we're going to be looking at row 29. And there is one X. Most of this row is blue and white. There, there is more blue and white, but there's only one X. And you're only paying attention to the X's. So our first stitch goes in that same spot where we had joined it. Only we're just picking the back loop. Keeping all the tails out of the way. Single crochet. Now the one X is right here. It's going to drop down in between these two stitches. So we don't really need to count because we can use our visual cues and that makes things go faster when you're not actually counting things like that. If you find that things are getting skewed or lopsided, you might want to go back to counting. But for now, we're going to say, hey, we know what we're doing. We can use that visual cue. We know we want to do a drop double crochet right between those posts. And the gray dot double crochet is always going into the gray loop at the front. And then we keep going round and round. Now this is how you would do sleeves and stuff like on a sweater. This is how you would do a little pouch. That's what we're making today, a little Percy pouch. If you wanted to make a flat circle, you could sew a flat circle on the bottom. I'm going to fold mine in half at the end and sew it together. Probably keep the seam on the side, but it doesn't really matter, right? And you can just make it as tall as you want. If you want to actually see the arrows, because that's what I'm doing is arrows, it's about 20 rows for the arrows. 
and hopefully your colors are a bit more fun. I don't really like these colors. I just picked scrap stuff from my box because it's a small project. It's just good for scraps. And maybe some people don't really consider this scraps. It's probably half a skein each, right? But when you're used to making blankets that require like 12 skeins, that's a scrap. I can't make a blanket with that, you know? So we're doing our drop double crochet and we keep going, making sure you're skipping. And I'm just like standing at my desk for this whole thing. I don't know if I'm going to finish this whole pouch because crochet, I'm fast, but I'm, I'm not that fast. I don't know if I can stand for an entire pouch. 20 rows seems like a lot for me. So we might only get like 10 rows in and then I'll have to say, all right, that's enough for today. Let me go take a break. But if that's the case, I will not work on my project without you. And I'll do another live video later to finish the square or pouch or whatever we're doing here. Um, because this will be my YouTube project. So I have lots of other projects to work on. <laughs> I won't work on this one off camera. I'll keep it for all camera work. Now we're not counting at all. If we wanted to count, it would help us at the end when we're joining. Oops, get out of there. But I am getting pretty confident in knowing visually which stitches count and which stitches are those joining stitches. So this would be the counting one. And that one there is a joining stitch. It goes right into there. So now we just need to go under our stitch here with a slip stitch. Grab our yarn. Pull this one tight. Tight, tight. Thank you for all the love, guys. Zara says, thanks. I'll be grateful if we can finish the pouch together. Yay for another live. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. And Cindy said, yay, you're awesome. Which is like, yeah, duh. <laughs> uh, what have I done here? I think I did my locking in. I'm ready to use it. Yeah. You guys are so distracting with all the love, you know? I get distracted and I start getting a big head, a big ego. They love me. They really love me. We are looking at row 30 now. I'm using my uh, red. And if I look at the pattern, I can see that there's one dropped here, a double crochet. And then it does not join here. It skips one and it drops here. So we can count or we can just look at those visual cues. And our first stitch, it's in that tight stitch that's already been worked, but we're using the back loop only this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the count Sarah is asking. I don't think that our comments are going to show up when the video gets replayed. I don't remember how that works. I don't know. So that's why I try to read most of them. Um, ooh, we got another person here. Lily says thumbs up and blows a little, is it a smiley face blowing a heart? So we did eight single crochets and now we're going to do the dropped one. It's going right into that previous double crochet. So it's making a nice line. Then we're going to skip three. We'll do three single crochets. One, two, three. And then our double crochet comes over here. So this is the tip of the arrow. It's going to be like a point over here, like a triangle, and then the little stick of an arrow. I don't know. Does arrow have? Maybe there's technical terms. And then we can count again until we get to our stitch marker. This is between the stitches here. So this will be one, two, three, four, five. And let's look on our pattern to make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we're good. So make sure that you're not using that one because it's been covered by the double crochet. One, two, three, four, five. 
that's a single repeat that we've done but we are going to do it three times which of course makes my video longer but I didn't want a useless pouch so if we start the count again this is one two three four five six seven eight is that what we had before <laughs> And then we have a drop double crochet. Then we're doing three singles. One, two, three, and a drop double crochet. Then we have five more before we get to the end of the repeat, which will be actually 13, five and eight. So we have 13 stitches here before we get to the next drop double crochet. If you don't want to count them, you can just keep watching and you know that your next drop double crochet is going to be right on top of the double crochet from before. So that's right here. Then we have three. One, two, our drop double crochet goes here if you're looking at the red there's one double crochet one that doesn't get used and then we're grabbing the next one and then we have five to finish off one two three four and five so we're gonna Go into both loops to join it together with that slip stitch. We're going to pull up the other color right through. Tighten the red because he's just holding on. And do another slip stitch to lock everything in. So the join, if you look very closely, you can tell this is our seam. But from a distance, it's a pretty neat seam. It's not going to be too noticeable. Not noticeable seams are a nice way to look professional. And I have to move my mouse to tell me that I'm now on row 31. Now it's, I'm gonna count them if we want to, but it's pretty visually not too hard to find where we're going. My yarn is a bit tangled here, ooh la la. If you have the chart in front of you, you'll see that it has those mesh dots. This will be the first row where I'm going to adjust that and I'm going to stick extra stitches in. So we'll start, of course, in that same place that we joined. We're going to pick up the back loop only to do the single crochet. Oops. Count just for one repeat. That'll help us. Okay. So here we're going to do one single crochet, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll have nine single crochets. The actual pattern now tells us to do a double, single, and a double, but that single in the middle is for the mesh dot from interlocking that hasn't been adjusted. We can adjust it and make a solid arrow. So we yarn over, we do one double crochet. Then we do another double crochet. And then we do a third double crochet. Then we're going to count to the end of the row again because we are, we'll just move this guy, he's getting a little bit floppy. So it was right here is our line. We'll put him right up here. And we can count on the chart. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll double check here that we got it right. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're starting the repeat again. Two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're going to do three doubles. If you've read any of my patterns, you know that my key explains the stitches because you were doing mosaic crochet and I just write them as singles and doubles but you have to know that the doubles are dropped and they go down here and the singles are back loop only it just shortens the written part so um, obviously you can't see the writing while I'm doing a live video but if you have any of my patterns that's a good thing to notice three four five six now we can move that if we wanted, but he doesn't seem to be pulling as weird, so I'm going to leave him. And we'll start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're going to do three doubles and that will be our final repeat of this round. If I was making a proper tutorial video, I probably wouldn't show three repeats because it takes too long, but I didn't want a useless pouch. <laughs> so six on this side again, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see that loop there. He looks confusing. If you're not counting, you might try to add stitches in there. We don't want to use that. We're going to go right into that first stitch to join everything. And then pull it up. Tighten it so it disappears. And another tight one so that it disappears. Move my little mouse. We're going to be looking at row 32 and it starts with an X. So our first, this is going to be the bottom line of the arrow pokey and this will be the back line that kind of designs the picture. So our first stitch here is going to be, we would have been in this hole. We're going to drop down to this loop. And keep that out of the way. Double crochet. And then if you wanted to, you have to really pay attention that that's the stitch that you were skipping. So the next single crochet goes here. You have to be very careful with your count on mosaic crochet. Otherwise your design gets messed up. And I should count here. How many do I got? Um, two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 13. It looks like we're going to do 13 single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, my yarn did a funny thing there. Nine, 10. 11, 12, 13. So again, instead of using this double crochet and we're skipping one, the next loop for our double crochet is going to be this red one here. So we're just doing one. And then, which row am I looking at here? One, two, three. Three to finish the repeat. Make sure you're skipping that one, going into the next one, two, three. We did one repeat. So this is the arrow. He's starting to appear. And we're going to do it again and again. <laughs> Got any um, distracting questions to distract me from my crochet? Like, uh, I have brown eyes and brown hair and we have two cats and we bought some apple trees 
My husband put the apple tree just outside the window. Right in front of me here, I have a window that looks out onto our front door. Well, I don't know if it counts as the front door. It looks onto a door that we use. And he put our new apple tree there. It's still in the pot that we bought it in. He didn't get a hole made for it yet. He only got one hole dig digged, dug, <laughs> one hole dug. And he planted one of our apple trees, but we had bought two. So we, uh, he put it there in front of me and he said, if it falls over, you have to go save it. And I'm like, if I'm doing a live video, I'm not going to go save an apple tree. Just saying. Uh, do you remember what the count was between here? Um, oh, that's because I messed it up. <sighs> Ashley, we are not putting a double crochet there. That's our arrow. I tried to put a double crochet here. I wasn't looking. They are called prairie apples, something like that. Prairie something. What's my weekend routine? It's pretty much the same as every other day. I have no distinguishing features between all my days. I crochet every day. <laughs> and it's 2 a.m. Lily, go to bed. <laughs> Lily is going to go to sleep. Good. You can watch the rest later. And if we don't finish, there'll be another live later. And um, yeah, get some rest, girl. Uh, my weekend routine is the same as every day because I have nothing that distinguishes. I don't go to an office job and we homeschool. Alice is the only one old enough to do schooling, but we homeschool, so it's not like I have to take her to class. And my husband doesn't work regular hours. He helps his brother um, do construction work, or he works for a local farmer, or he, I don't know, he does a whole bunch of random jobs. He is an engineer by trade, like a mechanical engineer, but he has not been doing engineering work for almost a, six months now. So, yeah. Um, every day just looks the same for me. I wake up, I crochet, I check my emails, I see if anybody is having problems. I usually try to post at least once on my Instagram and I check in on my Facebook group and I get the kids breakfast and change diapers and, you know, you're a stay-at-home mom, but also an electrical engineer. Do you actually work from home doing your electrical engineering stuff? Or is it kind of on pause right now? Uh, I wasn't counting, but there's three more. I counted the first repeat, and maybe that's enough. I don't know. I'm mostly using the visual cues, which you can see is not always good because I visually did not put that in the right spot. This round is, yes, one double crochet. Oh, you know what? Thanks. Because, look, I messed it up. <laughs> okay, so maybe I can't talk and crochet. Yeah, thank you like one double crochet 13 singles one double crochet and then three singles which means that this first one here was supposed to be a double because that's the tip or the back end of my arrow did you notice I make a mistake are you just being really kind about repeating that you've been cleaning the house boring <laughs> crocheting in your head I I think I dream crochet and I'm always thinking about this pattern or that pattern. I have so many works that I'm like actually crocheting and then also works that I wish I was crocheting or drawing or designing. So always crochet. Used to work now at pause since 2004. Is that when you had your babies? Baby babies. I'm not sure how many babies you got. I have three and I was working in an office before that. Not doing engineering work, just doing office work. Um, bookkeeping. So, let's see, this is the one I need to work on here. 6.30 p.m., did you have some supper? Are you guys late suppers? Supper time in my house, growing up, was always about 5 p.m. And for my husband, it was always about 6 or 6.30. And, no, I actually did make a mistake, sweetheart. <laughs> I missed this stitch right here. So, I did it right the first time. And then you reminded me that I did it wrong. But you were very kind about it because you just were like, hey, is this the stitch? I'm like, yeah, it is. I better fix that. Um, I think the moral of the story is it is too difficult for me to translate a chart into a written pattern and talk at the same time. But I'm going to do it anyways because we got more to go.
and I am interested in you guys and your lives and I love meeting people and I think it's funny how things like supper time just to me supper time means five and to him supper time means six which means when we're late for supper he's not feeling panicked at all so in just in my own household we have kind of like a difference of opinion and then you go across sea or cross land into different countries and supper has completely different meanings right it's like oh well we only just have a little snack at supper oh we call supper tea <laughs> that's uk did you like my uk accent that doesn't sound like a uk accent at all you can just laugh at me i'll be the crochet person that you can laugh at one two three we're done the round Woohoo! okay Carol says she did the 2020 Mother's Day crochet along with the flowers. I don't have any videos for those ones. That was when I literally just started designing. I think the Mother's Day cow started like two or three weeks after I published my first pattern. And I was absolutely blown away by how much interest there was. People actually liked my patterns and I was learning how to do so many things and they were just interlocking crochet and it was pretty amazing and then it was stayed popular for such a long time so yeah supper is as close to five as possible I agree it's got to be five pause and show the work okay so here's our joining spot and if you're looking at the chart what we've got is one double crochet 13 singles one double and three singles that is the repeating section and now we've repeated it three times so this double crochet and this double crochet are the same stitch on the chart you only need to see one and we've done it all three times so this is the arrow that you can start to see and outside of the arrow is stripes my red is contrasting enough with the black and the white and the gray so that's good I'm glad that that color is working but I think it's actually kind of ugly colors I'm more of a pink and purple kind of girl and I'll move my mouse because now I'm looking at row 33 on the chart you're welcome Zara and we are using this grayish blackish whatever look at my yarn is being all tangled because I keep twisting things let me fix that I'm not gonna lose my yarn it'll fall off and I'll be so sad red yarn you can go around and around and I have a drink here beside me it's just some pop soda however you like to call it but um there we go so my yarn is no longer tangled although it's still kind of a mess let me take a sip here all right you're using orange and purple oh I like those colors too little bit flashy um, red and gray is gonna be very masculine in my opinion which will be fine maybe my son will like it or my husband or we can just stick it in the pile of mom's crocheted stuff that nobody cares about <laughs> that happens too so I'm back to using this color row 33 on my chart is what I'm looking at and it's going to start with it starts with uh, a nothing and then it has X nothing X nothing X nothing but that I'm gonna adjust because I want a solid one so if you look at a chart that has those mesh holes you can fill them in that's kind of the point of what I'm saying so first we're gonna start with a single crochet because there's one X next that drops down is that right this double crochet Oh, you know what I did? I skipped the first stitch here. Remember, we have to go, we joined into that double crochet. That's also my first stitch. So, find that loop, the single crochet. Oh, I'm not using red, I'm using gray. It goes into the top of that double crochet, but just the back loop. Kind of a hard one to get into. Maybe I will find a different way of joining, I'm not sure. I like the way it looks, but it is hard to get into. Okay, so the first single crochet 
is going into that double because then the next double crochet is going beside it. Oops, come on you. Double crochet. And if we wanted the mesh dots to show, which some people like, it's kind of a design feature and saves on yarn. It makes things a little bit flexible. I'm going to go double crochet all the way across until right here. This little pokey, he's going to stay pokey, I think. Let me double check. One, two, three. Oh, maybe it goes. Maybe what row am I looking at? Oh, it's because I clicked on it earlier when I was looking at it in the computer. I brought it up here and I clicked and it's still staying there. That's confused me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We're going to do thirteen double crochets. So filling up this whole space with double crochets. And this is where, if you wanted to lock them in, I will do the first time not locking them in because then you can see that it does create a little flap. Yes, the first stitch. Yeah. The joining stitch, I went into both loops, like a normal single crochet spot. And then for the first stitch, I used that same spot, but going into the back loop only. So it is difficult to get in there. However, it keeps that join nice and tight, and I wanted the join to be tidy. So that's why um, when I went to do it and I wasn't paying attention, it looked like it was too tight to go into, and it had already been used. So that's where I confused myself. And knowing where I confuse myself, it's likely that other people are going to confuse themselves in that very same spot, right? So we did 13 double crochets here. And because they are always dropping down into the flap, it creates this little flappy here. Some people really don't like this. It doesn't create a problem for me in general. The next stitch here is going to be single crochets all the way to the end. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we know we've gotten to the end of our repeat because the next stitch is a double crochet. So this time I'm going to lock them in and we'll sh I'll show you the difference. So this is kind of the flap it's created. Now we're going to start the repeat over again. We've got one single crochet and then 13 doubles. And when I do my locked double crochet, the first yarn over and through two loops is normal. But then the next time before I yarn over, I enter into the back loop of the stitch that we'd normally be skipping. And then when I do my yarn over, I go through that loop and through the two loops on my hook. So I'll show you again. I yarn over because I'm doing a double crochet. Pick up that front loop, yarn over and pull it through because we're doing a double crochet. There's three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through two. Now there's two loops on your hook. So we're going to add a loop. We're going into the back loop where we would normally make a single crochet. Yarn over, pull it through that new loop plus the two loops on your hook. The locking doesn't use that much extra yarn. It just uses a little extra time and it does make the piece slightly stiffer because this is very fluid. So you definitely want to uh, be aware of what you're doing and then make your choices, right? You're welcome for that explanation and showing it. I'm going to do this whole section using my locked process because I want to show you what the back looks like. Now for a pouch like this, are you planning to put in a fabric liner or not? That might make a difference on to whether you want those little flaps. If you were making, say, a, a blanket, the little flaps are not large enough, in my opinion. Oh, I forgot to lock that one in. <laughs> the little flaps are not large enough, in my opinion, to, like, get anyone's toes caught in them. So I really don't think they're a problem that way. And they do trap extra heat. So it can make your blanket feel a bit warmer and it makes it feel thicker, but really it's just sort of flappy. So those are kind of the things that you need to know when you're making your choice. Do you want to lock it in or not? It takes extra time to find that loop. And if you're not careful, 
when we start to forget to think. Um, I'll pull it through and then I'll yarn over again and that actually adds bulk. You're not supposed to yarn over again, right? So it's just extra. But once you get going, it's not too much extra and it does lock it in very nicely. So I have some projects where I lock in some stitches, not all the stitches, only on big gaps, not on small gaps. It just depends on what look you're trying to create. There's no wrong answer. It's just, you know, you have to make your choice. All right, so I'll do my four on this side just to finish that repeat. There we go. So this is what it looks like on the front. The front is looks the same, whether you've locked it in or not. You can see this one is standing taller because this one's getting pulled down and that's where it creates a bit of stiffness. And on the wrong side, you get a flap. Whereas over here, you can see these little dashes. That's where everything's been locked in. There's no flap. For a purse, maybe you really don't want those flaps. I don't know. My kids are not going to care. So you could lock in the middle if you just wanted shorter flaps, whatever you like. Um, just be consistent because it does change the look of things just slightly. So generally, I would say if you're going to lock them in, you know, do it all. I just read my message. It was thanks for the clear explanation. Oh, I, I assumed it was thanks. <laughs> yeah, I have autocorrect issues all the time. So we're going to do our final repeat here. One single crochet and then all doubles. If you wanted to, you can do like locking one stitch, not locking the next stitch, locking one stitch, not locking the next stitch. But to me, it feels like it gets a bit wibbly wobbly. I'll go through the whole thing. So some people suggest that as an option because then you don't have to lock them all in and it takes time to lock them all in. But I really prefer if you're going to do it, um, I think that it looks nicer. Either lock them all in or don't. So you can see it's it pulls on it pulls on one stitch and then not the next and it makes them kind of gappy. So I'm I'm not gonna leave that actually. I dislike it so much that I'm not even gonna leave it for a tutorial because I just think it's not nice enough. And I did lock that first one. I'm just not going to lock them. I don't think locking it is worth it for my current project. I wonder how long YouTube will let me be on a live video. I'm at 1 hour and 18 minutes. Will YouTube just like cut me off? How does that work? Um, there's probably a limit. Although I think I've seen some pretty long videos. So maybe we'll just keep going. I don't know. If you wanted to count to make sure you're not missing a stitch, that's cool. I'm just going to use the visual cues of knowing that I have to fit inside those red double crochets. So I'm just going to go all the way. 12 hour long. Okay. I can't crochet for 12 hours without a break. So we will not be doing 12 hours today, but that's good. Maybe they won't cut me off because that would be really awkward if they cut me off in the middle of a stitch and then I wouldn't know where to start for the next video. You know what I'm saying? So our next um, four stitches are single crochets. One, two, three, and four. So this is where we're, we're joining into that first single crochet under both loops. And that's where we have to not skip that stitch when we go to do the next one It is in the back loop. So first I did slip stitch to join the row, pick up my new yarn, tighten this ridiculous little yarn, and then do a tight, 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 finish the join. So that is kind of the process. Now I'm going to move my mouse so that I know what I'm doing. Nope, that's not right. Come on. Ah. Okay, I don't know what I clicked. Go away. There we go. Row 34 starts with a double crochet. That makes sense. 13 hours. 
Joshua Alexander, I've never heard of that, is Canadian, you say, because Gisa Bunny says, one of your fellow countrymen, Joshua Alexander, did a live making video, metal sculpture, which is pretty cool, and I think that was over 13 hours. He was prepared to do 24, if I remember rightly. Well, I am not prepared to do 24. I'm going to have, it's like 10 minutes to noon, which should be lunch, but I'm not that hungry, so I'm going to keep going. So, I, I don't know. I can't do 12. I can't do 13. <laughs> But that's pretty cool that YouTube doesn't cut you off. I am a new account. Um, you have to be... You can't even do uh, a live video until you reach a certain status on YouTube. So they have lots of funny rules. I don't know. For this round, we are going to use the red. And we're going to start with a double crochet. Now, technically, if you were locking it in, you'd be locking it into this stitch that you just joined it. The nice thing is we're just going to ignore it. So we're going to go down here. Oh, and the front loop does get tighter as well because of all those locking stitches. Watch me struggle. Go in there. You can do it. Yeah, there we go. Get that white one out of the way. One double crochet. Then we have... This one has to be at least 13, but I'm going to count them here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. Okay, so we're going past because that the tip. We're going to do 15 single crochets. I have also seen people where this is now the step where they lock it in. They grab their back loop and they grab the loop down below and they do their single crochets that direction. And that locks it in so that the flap is now not flappy. But again, it pulls things down a bit because right here, the red and the gray and the red on this side, it's just going to be red and it's going to be pulling things together. So I've seen that on projects. It's not something I prefer. You can do it if you really don't like those flaps and you want to do the locking stitch that direction. I'm going to do normal one loop single crochet back loop only. Uh, 15. One double crochet and then 15 singles. I did not write this pattern out. However, if you go to my blog, there should be written section. It'll also have asterisks telling you where the border edges are. Um, let me double check. Do, do, do. Oh, I need my mouse. You want to know? Can you see me here? I'm going to go to my website. It's going to be on a page. No, how does that work? Post page. I think it's page. I have a WordPress blog as my website, and I also am always learning how to use that. Because I really don't know what I'm doing on anything is what it feels like. And yet people are always like, oh, you're amazing. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Summer Direction Crochet Along is what I'm using. That's what these little arrows were designed for. And if you go to ashleyslint.com slash summer dash direction dash C-A-L, then you can find the purchasing of the pattern or you can find the free... Oh, I see. The free uh, written pattern is online. Charts are only available in the purchases, but the written, this is what I'm trying to get to. So if you go there, then you can pick interlocking or mosaic. I am doing mosaic. And there is a little button that lets you skip to the sections. These arrows are section four dark arrows rows 25 through 48 and if you read the little stars that'll be easier for me look at that oh man why didn't I think of that sooner so we are doing row 34 and on the written if you go to my website it looks like let me see if it'll show you again oh my cords were in the way is that legible so we're at row 34 we're not doing the joining stitch because we're in the round. And this double single, double single is actually four stitches at the beginning and then only double single, double at the end. So I have 
when I was looking at the chart, I simply moved it over one and I started with like single. And then between these asterisks is what you would be repeating. So if you wanted to get this written and skip what's on the outside of the asterisks, you can do what's in the asterisks. And um, mine just, I put the single crochet at the beginning instead of the end. That's the only difference. So it's, the written is still going to help me because I don't have to count squares while I'm trying to crochet. Only 10 hours. Oh my goodness. Edmonton, Alberta, hey? Only 10 hours. Maybe he was happy to go to 12. Well, he's still crazy in my books. Now, another thing to note, maybe I'm not supposed to tell you, uh, my patterns, obviously I make money when I sell patterns, and I also have ad revenue on my websites, but I don't have much because I have very minimal amount of ads placed on there. There is not a million pop-ups getting in the way. The point of that is because I want you to stay on the website when you're reading the pattern. If you have that screen open, then it's going to count as a view or a visit or whatever, and it gets me more ad revenue. If you would prefer to copy and paste it instead of buying the pattern, that is an option. I used to have a copy protection on there because I technically don't want you to do that. However, it was interfering with like screen readers, and that's worse. I would rather have people copy and paste the pattern instead of buying it or instead of viewing it and still allow people who need that accessibility option. So it is an option. It's there. You usually stay on the website. Well, that's really nice because that's how us bloggers make some little extra money. More of my money comes from buying patterns. Well, I mean, you guys buying the patterns. I do make a slight amount. I think it averages like $15 a month on my blog. And that over two years, I managed to make $100 ad revenue. And I pay $400 a year for the blog setup. So mm, technically, I'm still paying way more than I'm earning. But that wasn't the point of the website. So it's okay. I'm, I like that. That's fine. Um, but I just wanted you guys to know that you can buy this pattern. But if we're only doing this section, just look at it on the blog. It's all written out there. You can look at the chart if you want to buy the pattern. But you don't really need the chart because I have written it out for you. We are on row 34. And we started here. Um, it says double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single. And I have filled in all the gaps. So that's the other issue. Um, wait, it says row 33. I might have confused myself. What was on here? 34... Oh yes, it's because my chart starts at zero and the written starts um, at one or the other way around. My chart starts at one, my written starts at zero. So when I was looking at the chart just now and I counted row 34, it says 15 across. So that's actually on the written, we're on, we're on the written row 33. And row 33 has an asterisk and it starts here and it places this double crochet at the end of the repeat. So that's the only thing that's different because I was using the chart. If you're going back and this is a rewatch, um, I'll put notes in the description later. I'll fix that up. But yeah, we're getting there. I don't know how many I did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then if you're looking at the written, it says double single, double. But that first double I had used... So if I had three on, anyway, hopefully I haven't confused you even more. What we're going to do is just do our 15 single crochets. Then we're going to do one double crochet. You can see the red. It's not going on the red. It's skipping this one. It's in the next. And then we have one more, one or two. Let me look at my chart here. 15 double single. So that's the end of the repeat the single. The next, this is where the, the stitch marker, if he went up the line, that's the end of it. So um, if you're looking at the written part, this is row 33. If you're looking at the chart and following me with this video, we're looking at row 34. And we started with a double. We did 15 singles, one double, one single. If you're looking at the written, they just move this double to the end. They just move the repeat over. And by they, I mean me. I did all that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. 
So, um, yeah, just options. I'm going to keep crocheting. YouTube isn't going to cut me off. We'll just keep going. I'm not hungry for lunch yet, so we're okay. And we're going to count them because otherwise we get lost. Three. Oh, my yarn's being funny here. Come on. Uh-oh. It says... Did you see that? My internet did something weird. It says reconnecting. Is it still working? Well, it looks like it's still working. Um, it doesn't look like it's storming outside, so maybe that was them cutting me off at one and a half hours. I don't know. It looks like we're still good, so I'm going to keep going. My kids won't even be away for 12 hours. Oh, for a fraction of a second it paused. That's kind of what it looked like on my screen too, but then it had a big red thing. Not for frogging says, hi, I finally caught you live. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. We're having so much fun. We're in the middle of a project. You missed me babble about this and that and the other things. So you don't get to have the confusing version. You get to hear we are working on a little pouch and I'm using the dark arrows section from my mosaic summer direction cow. It is on my blog for free. However, I'm editing it to get rid of the mesh dots. So this is completely solid. And at the end, we'll sew this bottom together and we'll have like a little pouch. So welcome. Hopefully you can uh, see what we're doing here. You can grab your yarn and pretend with us if you like, uh, or you can just wait and replay it later. Uh, I'm using the visual cue here, this double crochet in a single, before I do my number, double single, so that's here. It's right in between those others. And the written important part is on my blog, but it, because I didn't look at that before I started, I have moved to the repeating section. So the written part on the blog starts here, and I'm actually starting here, but the design is at the same. And I'm doing three repeats because two was too small. I wanted to have a functional bag. It does make the video longer, but it gives me time to like make more mistakes and show you how to fix them. That seems to be what people like on the live videos. They see me make mistakes and they see me fix them and then they learn from that. Normally on a recorded video, I get rid of the mistakes because that's kind of the point of the video, right? You're just showing them how to do it properly. But it is actually important to learn how to fix mistakes, too, so it's good. I'm glad that we can learn together. Plus, you get to see how crazy I am and say, well, she's pretty crazy. That must mean good art. That's usually how it works, right? Crazy people have good art. <laughs> so there's, uh, we're just going between here. That's the last double crochet of this row, round. And we have to finally have that single before we are joining. The joining is gonna go into the top of this double crochet. I'm going under both loops, pulling a slip stitch through, and then grabbing my gray, tighten up the red one, he disappears, and lock it in with the gray. Tighten it up so he disappears. Now I lost my little chart. Let me get my computer again. Oh, now you can see me crocheting on there. Is that distracting? I'll push it up just a little. I brought the box up because otherwise it was way too far away. But this, the live video, instead of using regular camera, it like makes a bubble camera. So it like catches all this extra stuff, which is very weird to me, but whatever. So I need my chart. And on the chart, I'm now looking at row 34. Five, but in the written, what are you doing here? On the written, that'll be row 34. So we are looking at, we're going to keep that red to the back, actually. Don't, don't want to get him tangled on the wrong side. And we're basically, this is, now we're doing the top half of the arrow. So it's going to be the inner part and not those two stitches that we'll do. So that'll be 13 single crochet. Mixed candy rug number 53. I don't know what that means. What's a mixed candy rug? Is it, um, are you like, is that, it must be pattern name. Mixed candy rug number 53. 
ah, it's hard to watch something and crochet something else because sometimes I edit my videos while crocheting another pattern. <laughs> that is difficult, but uh, good. Yeah, watch me. We can chat. We can talk. It's all good. Repeat the instruction, please. That is a great question because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We're on row 35. Let me look here. It says one single crochet. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yes. So the actual pattern, because it has those mesh dots in it um, I'm adjusting it so we're gonna do one single crochet it'll be right on top of this double oh the YouTube channel is called mixed candy oh interesting a crochet channel I assume and then we're gonna do 13 doubles so one single 13 doubles and then one two three singles it'll be one two three and then another double right in this gap and then that'll be the end of the repeat because this double actually starts at the beginning again. So for this row, we're going to have one single crochet, 13 doubles, three single crochets, one double. I think you must be writing it down, hey, so that you can do it again later. Or maybe I should write it down. You got it? Good. Good, good, good. So the first single crochet goes in that same spot where we had joined only now we're using the back loop it's right on top of the double and then we're going to do the same number of double crochets that was down here so you can count them oh you're two rows behind me well all my babble gives you time to catch up <laughs> yes you have to write it down otherwise you have to pause the show too many times right yeah well very clever I can't wait to see what you're making are you in my Facebook group or you could take me on Instagram on Instagram, my at symbol is at Ashley's Lint. Actually, I think I can type it on here. Ooh, yeah, I can. Uh, move out of my way. More time for you. Okay, so here's my Facebook group. Facebook.com slash groups slash Ashley Brottle Designs. Um, it is technically a private group. You have to ask to join. But if you answer the questions, you'll be allowed in automatically. Or if you're on Instagram, you can tag me Instagram.com slash Ashley's Lint. And my name is spelled A-S-H-L-E-E. -E. And Lint is like, you know, the fuzz that comes from your dryer when you have too much fluff. I don't know. Yeah, so whenever you finish, you can tag me and I'll get to see it. And I'll be like, wow, amazing. Um, where am I? You're welcome. I'm going to bring up my chart again so I don't forget what I'm doing. Take a little liquid here. I don't have pop very often. I usually have um, water. <laughs> so I'm going to be buzzed all day. You came in on the fourth round and missed the beginning. Well, the beginning is just single crochets. The foundation row, single crochet, then single crochet, and then single crochet again. We don't have any drop doubles until round four. So... You're not too far behind us. And Zara's doing 72 stitches, four repeats. Yeah, your purse will be a little bigger than mine, which is good because I think it'll be more functional. I was trying to keep mine small for the video, but still functional. So um, I gotta move my box back. This is keeping me up close to the video because the desk is too far away. Hey, Ashley, do you crochet professionally or it's a hobby? Well, it was a hobby and then it turned into a job so two years ago no it would be longer than two years ago two years ago is when I published my first pattern and before that um, like in high school and stuff I I learned how to crochet when I was about eight years old but it was always like an on again off again thing you pick up a yarn thing here and there I didn't know how to read patterns I didn't know how to do any stitches other than double crochet I literally didn't even know what a single crochet was. I thought that that was just me being lazy about my double crochet. And probably two and a half years ago then, uh, my son Remington, he just turned five. So he was, no, I guess it was closer to three years ago then. I picked up my work again. I had a pretty traumatic birth with my son Remy. And I needed to find a hobby 
I was going pretty crazy. So I picked up my crochet. And in order to stimulate my brain, I decided to learn how to do reading patterns. And that led to learning how to do interlocking crochet. And when I did the interlocking crochet, I was like, wow, you know, I think I could draw onto this chart and I could figure out my own patterns. So I did. And then someone convinced me that I should publish it. And I was like, well, I guess make $5 a month on publishing patterns. It's better than I'm making right now because I was just a stay-at-home mom. My husband was a mechanical engineer. We were renovating our house. We had Alice who was two, no, she'd be older than two. Alice, who were, I don't know, she was four-ish. Remington was about a year and a half. I literally don't remember the first year and a half of his life. I look back on pictures and I don't remember it all. It's all just gone because of the trauma. And um, I thought, well, $5 a month on these patterns would be more than I make now. So let's give it a try. So two years ago, April 1st, 2020, I published my first pattern and it kind of exploded in my face. Like people actually <laughs> like these patterns. They like my stuff. And I haven't stopped crocheting since. It's now like 24 seven, all I do is crochet and do patterns. And it has allowed my husband to be home more often, which um, I mean, financially, it's still a bit tight. However, emotionally and for crazy person, Ashley, I really need him here. I can't, um, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So he's home all the time with me and the kids and I make the money mostly. He does odd jobs, but most of our financial stuff comes from my patterns, which absolutely blows my mind. If you had told me that people actually buy patterns and that I could make this my job, I would probably not have believed you. <laughs> so um, obviously we're not making <laughs> as much as he was making as an engineer, but we are willing to take that pay cut and change our lifestyle and be in this we're in a thousand foot trailer like a mobile home and that allows us to have him home to help me because i'm a crazy person and the kids like it and it's good for us all and it's been a pretty big change in our lives but definitely i take crochet as a therapy hobby slash now it's supporting my family it's how we feed ourselves so it's crazy that it's been two years and this is where I am. And now I get to teach people how to crochet and keep myself sane-ish, <laughs> heavy on the ish. <laughs> so yeah, that's my quick story. And um, Zara was saying she is using a three and a half millimeter hook and thin yarn. And I wanted to point that out because I'm using four and a half millimeter and worsted weight yarn. And all of my patterns, because they're not sweaters, you don't have to really match gauge to wear them. You can always change your yarn and hook size as long as they match. You probably wouldn't want to wear, use an eight millimeter hook with fingering weight yarn. It would be really weird. But as long as you keep matching the sizes, you can change it bigger or smaller. So that is a fun side note. I'm glad you guys like my little story. <laughs> and um, yeah. It, I didn't set out to be inspiring. I just tried to keep my brain sane, you know? And we didn't do much crochet through my story because I can't do too many things at once. You know, brain, brain power. My kids are my world and I love them so much, but they are, uh, it's hard being a mom, a stay-at-home mom who has no contacts and no support except for a husband who, at that point, he was working out of town. We lived 45 minutes away from his work and he worked 12 hours a day plus the hour and a half driving. And when he got home, he was renovating our house. So the house that we had bought had a lot of issues and um, he was trying to fix it. And the town was quite unfriendly and I didn't have support. So it wasn't, it wasn't good. Oh, yes, see? Therapy, crazy person crocheting. Uh, should I be reading all these comments out loud? I don't know if they'll show up, but people are saying stuff. So, um, Zara says, that's cool. You are an inspiration. Thank you. And Deva Smita said, very inspiring. Good job. More power to you. 
and also it does work as therapy. Nice. I agree. And not for frogging says this crazy person crochets for same reasoning. Good for you. And it's true. We've got a lot of crazy people in the crochet world. And it's just, um, I think we got a lot of crazy people in general. Just saying. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, limited to just crocheting people. But crocheting people have learned that it's soothing and helpful to keep your brain busy or occupied, keep your hands busy. It's just, it's a good way to keep busy and they're sort of like therapy. So now here, if we had pulled these tighter, I think you would notice that that's the joining stitch actually. So I'm just gonna go under that first loop that's closer, closer to the red. Oh, I think maybe that's, oh no. Yeah, see, this is the repeat section that we're looking at here. The gap is much bigger over here. So that's my joining. The joining does add just a little bit. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to join because I've literally never worked in the round like this before. This is my first time. I just sort of, um, I've done other crochet things and that's why I made it up just here on the spot. So that is just a, the joining space there. It's kind of half a stitch wide. It's not going to be too noticeable. We're going to ignore that. This was our double crochet at the end of our round. We have to join it to this single crochet. I'm going under both stitches. And I do want to pull it tight because I don't want it to have too big of a gap here. But that is what we're looking at there. And we need to grab the red. Where are you red? And then we're going to tighten the gray. Tight, tight, tight. And grab the red again. And tight, tight, tight. If I may ask, since I knew, which of your pattern got you the initial success? Um, well, when I started, I was a little bit crazy. And I published in my first month of publishing patterns, I published a new pattern almost every day. And they were squares, like this big. And I had other people crocheting them, so I didn't crochet them every time. I just drew them up, created the written pattern, made it a pattern. And I started my first crochet along uh, about two weeks after I had published my first pattern, which is a bit crazy. I mean, that's a bit much. I had very little experience and I just sort of jumped right in. And I would say that probably the Mother's Day crochet along is what got a lot of people following me because crochet alongs get shared in different Facebook groups. And I had a Facebook group and I was new on Instagram and I was new on Facebook and I was new everywhere. So I was kind of just exploding into all of it. And um, my growth has been pretty steady throughout the last two years. There's no giant boom. Even on my YouTube channel, it's just a very straight curve up. And that's pretty much how it was on Facebook as well and Instagram. And um, recently, the double wedding rings, play, like blanket square, adjustable pattern, whatever it is. It's called double wedding rings and it's a square, but you can repeat it so it makes it a blanket without joining squares. And that one has gotten a lot of love and a lot of initial, when I published it, it went on Ravelry's top five and it was, I won the cover photo on Mosaic Crochet World on Facebook and I sold quite a few patterns. I've never sold that many patterns in one day. Uh, it actually broke the record in one day for, I had never sold that many patterns in a month. <laughs> so that one exploded and then just last week someone shared their progress and it exploded again and I sold like quite a few copies in the last few days so I yeah it's pretty awesome it's a little bit overwhelming because I have a lot of doubt where I think that that can't be real people don't actually like my patterns it's a trick it's just COVID and they're all sick and they don't know what to spend their money on or something. It can't be really that my patterns are good because my brain tells me it's impossible. And then I have to look at the success and say, you know what, actually I'm doing pretty good. And why is that? Because I put a lot of effort into all of my platforms. I put a lot of effort into learning how to market myself, how to do good patterns, trying to make sure my patterns are well done. It helps that I'm a native English speaker because people who try to publish English patterns and they're not native English speakers, sometimes people are really unkind about the um, nuances in their language. So I think that has helped me, but it's unfair really. 
and I got a YouTube channel that was new to me as well. So just basically forcing myself to learn all these different things. Adding mosaic to my patterns was about um, six months in. I had only been doing interlocking crochet up until that point and adding mosaic helped because for whatever reason mosaic is all the rage in the magazines and on Ravelry and such. So uh, I, it is hard work for sure but it's also I think it's just great timing. I started this because of my issues and COVID didn't register. It wasn't the reasoning for me to do this, but a lot of people took up the craft because of COVID. So that was just timing. That was just timing for me. And uh, I will ride the wave for as long as it lasts, but I fully expect that at some point I won't be as popular because people won't be as interested. They'll get back to normal life. And um, yeah, that's sort of what I expect, I don't know. My yarn did get tangled here again. Hopefully it doesn't get knot. I think I'm on row 36 and I wanted to count them out loud for you so you can write it down. So we're going to do one double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then 13 singles, which will be on the top of here. Then we have one double crochet and then three singles. So that you can write that down and crochet with us. Row 36 if you're following me here, but if you wanted to go to the written, it would be row 35. And it definitely helps that um, my husband was willing to make lifestyle changes and our lifestyle has focused now around crochet. You know, he takes the kids out of the house so that I can crochet today. I don't know if you can hear my neighbor mowing his yard. We live in a trailer that has very thin walls, so I think you can hear lots of things outside. And yeah, my kids are pretty good. There has been one incident where normally, like when I have my crochet hooks and my scissors and such, I usually put things up out of the way or at least zip things up. And there has been one incident where I left the zipper open slightly. And my littlest, Melody, decided to help me trim the fringe on a mosaic piece that I was working on. And it got uh, a little bit past the fringe and she had cut my project apart. So there has been that, but mostly my kids support me as well because they think that uh, I'm doing great things and they, uh, they're good listeners. You teach well. A social platform has all sorts of challenges, but one can overcome it with time. Thank you, Desma. Des, Desamita? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I do try to teach well. I think it's uh, a skill that not everybody has. What am I doing here? What did I say I was doing? Double 13, then double 3. Is this? Oh, this is the first. That is the repeat. That's why. Mm -hmm. We're on the next repeat already. Yeah, but my kids are really good and people will sometimes say, oh, you're so lucky. But you know, that whole hard work thing I was talking about, I put that into my kids too. I actually have a child psychology degree. I went to the University of Saskatchewan here in Saskatchewan, Canada, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And it's just a three year psych degree. And I almost have a minor in sociology, but I was missing like one class and it wasn't really what I was interested in taking anyways. Um, I did my psych degree for the purposes of going to law school. I wanted to be a family lawyer. I didn't want to just like be a social worker where you know there's problems but you can't fix the system. I wanted to be the lawyer that could actually change the system. So I went to law school and um, I dropped out. It was extremely overwhelming and I was the second youngest person in my class and I had been on a waiting list and I got let into class because someone didn't show up so I had already missed a day of school and the change from like thinking that I was not accepted into school and suddenly being basically two months behind everyone because they had all summer to get their books and prepare and I was not prepared and I was young and I was still I've always been an emotional wreck essentially <laughs> and I couldn't handle it so I dropped out and uh um, it costs a lot of money to go to law school and then drop out, but finally, like last year, I've paid off my student loans, and I should have just done crocheting, right? Who would have 
Who would have thought crochet could be something I do? But I think having that analytical mind where I basically, obviously I know how to focus and do papers and create PDFs, so that helps. I'm good on the computer. And my child psychology degree has come in useful for raising my children. But um, obviously hands-on learning for being a mom has been more of an experience than book work. But it does help knowing psychologically knowing the developmental stages and what to expect out of your children and I read a lot of before I did crochet I used to read psychology papers in my spare time <laughs> that's kind of what I did now that I do crochet I don't have as much time for that so I mostly just catch it on Instagram and stuff but I used to read a lot of actual scientific papers in my spare fun time and uh, now I've just changed all that to focusing on my business and I don't have a business degree so it's been a learning curve but I know how to learn that's kind of the point and that is also why we choose homeschooling teaching our kids how to learn my husband was homeschooled as a kid and all through high school and he graduated university so he um, we both like to be teaching your command over language is good. I know writing a book is actually on my list. I wanted to be a book writer, like a novel writer, but now I think I might write a crochet book. Um, I do speak well, and here's more of my history. I love drama, so growing up I was always acting <laughs> in drama class, and I learned how to protect your voice and how to not say um every 10 seconds, how to allow for pauses and all those sorts of things so basically my whole life I have been skilled for this and I didn't know it that's kind of how I think of it anyways um yeah I obviously do still say um sometimes I'm still human I'm just good at hiding my quirks or well some of them <laughs> it does I think it does help that uh I've had all these experiences where I've been in front of audiences before, I'm not scared of that, and I know how to do computer stuff and create a website and create PDFs, so it's not just about my art, but definitely in high school my things were art class, drama class, and uh, pretty much just general good at school. I My psych degree is not just a Bachelor of Arts, it's also with distinction. So in university, my average was over 80%. If it had been over 90%, I would have been with, uh, how would they have said that? Excellent distinction or something like that. And my average was only 87. So I didn't get the extra distinction, which was a little disappointing, but that's okay. Uh, I have to move my mouse again, because I'm on row 37. And I'm gonna count it again, because right now, this first single crochet is gonna go here where I just joined and I don't want to forget that that's where he goes and I think it goes right across yep there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine we're gonna do nine single crochets then three double crochets one then three more single crochets and three doubles you have to use the tools and route your energy don't lose your focus and figure out what you're passionate for and what works for you you are right as Deba Smita, Deba Smita, I hope I'm saying that right. You're right. You have to use the tools that you've been given or that you've created over the years. And losing my focus does happen sometimes. I mean, I have three little kids running around. They are always taking my focus. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely like crochet. I like art and I like computer stuff. And it's supporting my family now. So my focus is definitely there. And that is good for us. Where am I? What row am I on? Oh, I just counted it. Were you listening? Because I wasn't listening. Let's count them again. One. It's essentially this. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Oh, there we go. Seven, eight, nine. I think it was nine. Maybe it was eight. I'll have to count again. 
where was I? Row 37 on my chart. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It is 9. Then we have 3 doubles. So it actually on the chart, it says double, single, double. Oh, that's okay, sweetheart. 9. Yeah, I got it. I counted it again, so it's okay. Um, double here. If you were following the actual written in the chart, it would put a single here and then a double because that's the interlocking mesh window. So you can see that I would have had dots all over this and I am adjusting the pattern. So that's why going off the written instructions on my blog doesn't entirely work. Although you could still create a pouch, but you wouldn't get this exact thing. Keep a stitch counter in the front. That helps. You know, if I was really smart, I would have been writing the pattern down like Zara has been because I don't have this written down. I've just been working off the chart, adjusting it as I go. Probably a paper and pen would be helpful, but I've never done this before. Something is not right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Did I miss a stitch somewhere? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I have a mistake somewhere because if you see here there's three and there's two on the edge and there's two here so it should be these three did I miss a stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, okay. So apparently the issue is that I counted nine but did ten single crochets. Yep. <laughs> there we go. So what we're looking at here is there's two double crochets and then three, and we're creating the top of that. That's why I knew that these two shouldn't be used for it. Double here. One, two. Oops, I got my yarn in there funny. Three. Nope, my yarn is being a little bit splitty. I'm just going to take that off because he's tick tacking on there. I guess I could move him up, but um, yeah, I'll just put him on the back instead. Now he won't tick tack on me. Okay, so we did nine singles, three doubles, which is an adjustment from the chart. It's not supposed to be, but that's okay. We're doing it anyways, and then we're going to do three singles one two three and if you are familiar with the chart or if you've seen my pattern before what we're actually creating is an arrow going this way and then right here starting the bottom of the arrow going that way so that's what this is and that's why i'm going to fill it in it's going to have three down and that is uh the end of the round one two three That's the beginning again. So we did nine, three, three, three. And we are going to do it again. Starting on top of that double crochet. That's our first stitch of the round. Two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine. Then we go double crochet one, double crochet two, double crochet three, and then three more across singles one, 
two, three, and then three doubles. One, two, three. Then our third repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, come on, yarn. One, two, three. And then three singles. One, two, three. And we end it with three more doubles. One, two, three. So you can see here again that joining stitch does give it a little extra space there. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to play around with a different kind of joining stitch that hides better. But for now, for this project at least, what we're doing is just joining with a slip stitch into that first single crochet and then switching our yarn with all sorts of loops and tucks and everything, right? Pulling it in. Cindy says, you are very inspiring and I commend you for being a stay-at-home working mom. Thank you. It is difficult and I think that there are a lot of people in a similar situation and everyone's just doing their best, you know? So I'm happy with the way my life is. Never expected it to be like this, but I'm happy. I gotta move my pup 38. Row 38, we are going to be doing one. Okay, so now this is actually this line here is going to be, um, what am I looking at here? One, that one. Will it let me highlight a row? No, it won't. Okay. Row 38, do, 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 there. So we have the dark color on my pattern is actually my wonky colors. And that means that this here, this red one, there's going to be a single red line and then the back of the arrow facing that direction is here and I'm filling in those stitches so my pattern chart is going to be technically wrong but uh, currently with the red we're just going to do single crochets until we get to here so I'm going to count them one two three four five six seven eight we're going to do eight single crochets one double three single crochets, another double, and then one, two, three, four, five single crochets to finish. So now here's where it would be handy if I wrote those numbers down, right? Mm, don't forget that your stitch that you joined into is also the one that we're going to start with because otherwise we'll lose a stitch. So Carol says, I'm going to say ye, um, I don't know, ye must be something else. Ye. I'm going to say ye. Bye. I think it says bye. I'm going to say bye now since the Champions League final is about to start. Liverpool versus Real Madrid going to be up late. Thanks Ashley for your dedication. It is bye. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, I think that might be soccer. Maybe soccer. I'm not really a sports person. I know some people are. You can go watch your boring old sports and we'll just be here crocheting and you'll miss us. You'll miss us. You'll be like, oh, I wish I was crocheting. Oh, <laughs> maybe you can crochet while you do it. You'll be like, oh, I wish I was listening to Ashley talk to me while I crochet. <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, enjoy. Do whatever you do. This is the longest live video I've ever done. I can't believe that nobody cut me off. That's kind of how I felt when I published my first pattern too. Like you just go to Ravelry and you publish and it's just there and nobody cuts you off. They don't, uh, 
they don't micromanage that they just let you do it so i kind of feel like i should just keep going here you know see you later have fun it'll be fine we'll still hear crocheting if you want to crochet with us later you can always watch it again right so no big deal And we're going to do one double crochet here. So if you're counting with me or if my count was right at the beginning, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that was my joining stitch. Eight. Mm, I should have written it down. Eight. Yes. So eight singles, one double, then three singles, one two, three, then we're going to put one double and we finish it off with five singles that gets us to our repeating section again. I think in a live video, YouTube can't give you any advertisements. So that's handy. If you're trying to crochet a project and you don't want ads to bump in in the way, if you watch it live, then you don't have ads. But if you watch it Later, is YouTube going to stick some ads in here? I'm not even sure. So starting over again, we have to do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have one double crochet here. And three singles, one, two, three, one double crochet. This is like a wall between the two arrows and five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. That gets us to the repeat again. So we've got to do eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One double crochet down here. Three single crochets here. Oh, my, there we go. Back loop only, of course. One, two, three. One double crochet here. And then five singles to finish off my repeating section. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to join it into that first single crochet with a slip stitch. I'm going to grab our yarn. Oh, I could show you what the yarn is looking at the back with all these pulls and tugs and everything. So I'm carrying that red one and locking him in place, pulling that tight. And this is what our join looks like. You can sort of see that red stitch is interrupting the gray, but it's a pretty neat join. There's not flaps all over the place, so I like it. And on the front, the gap is a slightly bigger than it would be like here. But I still think it's pretty neat. It's tidy and I don't mind it at all. I think it's good. Now, it is almost one o'clock here. I've been live for over two hours. So I think I might just um, count for row 39 and I'll tell you it's uh, I'm going to be filling in this whole spot it's basically the opposite of this row so we start with one two three four five six seven eight double crochets my cat is meowing he's like let me back in the house they're indoor outdoor cats they had a job to do they were supposed to be catching mice and they are 
we also have mice baits or catchers. What is it called? Mouse traps. We also have mouse traps and they also catch mice. So between the mouse traps and the actual cats, hopefully, we live out in the middle of nowhere. A lot of field around us, farmer field, growing stuff and big yards. And um, the village that we live in has uh, about 200 people in it. So the cats have a job. But when we got them and we moved here, it was winter and they were kittens and they were new to us. So we didn't want them to run away. So they're indoor, outdoor. Summer, they're supposed to be outdoor more often, but they're big babies. They come in all the time. The kids like them. So if you were counting with me, that should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Woohoo. Then it says one single crochet. One double crochet. That's going to be like this, finishing off the tip. And then three single crochets before finishing with one, two, three, four, five doubles. So that is round 39. Well, it's not actually round 39. I'm looking at the chart. It's 39 on the chart. On the written instructions, you'd be looking at 38. And it would actually say double single, double single, double single for all of these because I'm filling it in as I go along. I'm editing it. But um, I think that's it for me today. My, my tummy says, you must eat lunch, lady. So that'll be the end of me. And I said that I wasn't going to crochet off camera, but I will finish this round because we've done our count. I'll finish the round. And then later when I get a chance, I'll come back on and we'll finish up these arrows and we'll sew it all together and we'll have our little pouch. Okay. Thank you so much. I can't believe that I've been crocheting this long. I can't believe that people are listening to me and talking to me and it's great. I really am loving all this and YouTube didn't cut me off, which is crazy. But I, I'm going to cut myself off and I'll take a little break. Wait, wait, we got questions. Zara is here. She's got a question. Okay. Actually, I don't even know if you're female. I said she, but that might not be correct. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Esmeralda says, thanks for the live. You're welcome. The last round, please. Well, this isn't the last round. There are, I would have gone up to uh, 46. This is row 39. Um, so a couple more rounds for this one that we just finished round 39 do you want me to do the count again yes eight double crochet one single one double three single crochet five doubles and the eight matches up with those five so there's It'll look like this, only facing that direction. Good. Okay, so you can keep crocheting. If you were really clever, you could figure out the rest, but, or you can just wait for my videos. Um, you're going to post it soon? That'll be great. And um, yeah, so really, this little arrow, he flips. You can see this is the same part here, and this is the little arrow here. Not for frogging, it says thank you for the live. Nice talking to you. It was nice talking to you too and I'm glad that I got so many people checking me out and Zara is definitely going to be crocheting with me on my next live. So you can finish this round and we'll start at 40 for the next one. It might be today even. If I have a little lunch and I check on the kids and see where he's at if they're coming back, I might just pop back on which might be too late for you. I'm not sure. I know you guys were supper time there. So now it's evening. But uh, give me at least 20 minutes to eat something. And then I will start at row 40. How many later? Uh, oh, it's already, oh, you got to go to bed. <laughs> Here it is 12.51 p.m. Where I just sort of missed lunch, essentially. You are probably too tired. Um, we... Yeah, I, I don't think I'll do this again today because I think that he'll probably be on his way home with the kids soon and then it'll interrupt it and it'll be like three live videos and that would be weird. Do you think that's weird? 
Um, yeah, hopefully someday I can be organized enough and I'll plan out my lives and I'll say lives are always this day from this time. But right now I just sort of take the opportunity as it comes. Whenever the kids are out and it's quiet, I try to do either a recorded video that I edit or I do a live. And, um, yeah. So I will finish this round and next time we will be at round, well, on the chart it'll look like 40. And... Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for coming and seeing me and chatting. And I hope you have a great weekend. And yeah, you guys are best. Live or after live, it's all good. It's true. Even the after live is good. If there's no live chit chat, I probably can crochet faster. <laughs> I don't interrupt myself with all these silly stories. But uh, no, you're not. I'm not patient with you. You're just a person asking questions. Let's see, is it going to flip? I don't know if you can see me. i got to push buttons on this side. Bye, guys. You're the best. I am sure I want to stop.